Hello everyone, this week's parish is Parshat Miketz, it's uh, Shabbat Hanukkah, and we're continuing with the story of the brothers. So we're on cha uh, chapter 42, verse 23, and there we have uh, when the brothers uh, are in front of Yosef and they're speaking amongst themselves, and um, and they don't realize that Yosef understands what is being said. Now why is that? Because the Pasuk tells us, Fehem lo yadu ki Yosef ki hamelitz benotam. So they did, and they didn't know that uh, Yosef, Yosef heard or understood because uh, says our scroll an interpreter was between them, but really it means the interpreter was between them. Now what does it mean the interpreter? Who's the interpreter? So says Rashi in response to this question, that's Zemenashe Bno. This is Menashe, the son of Yosef. And uh, the Maharal explains in, in his commentary, Kur Aryeh, that um, the uh, one of the things we learn from this is the fact that Yosef taught his son Menashe Hebrew. And so from here we understand that even, even Yosef, who's the viceroy of Egypt, who um, was second in command after uh, Paro, even so, he of course taught his sons Egyptian, but uh, more importantly, he also taught them Hebrew. He was mocked about this, he made sure to teach them. And what's behind this? Why is it so important to know Hebrew? I mean, hopefully most of us realize that it is, but the question is why? Is this just a cultural thing because we're Israeli or because... Uh, we need to be culturally aware of our uh, of our heritage. So there's a little more to it, to it than that. And uh, one of the things we need to understand is that uh, uh, the way Torah is, one of the most important uh, facets of learning Torah is really understanding the language through which it's com communicated. That's true. Uh, that's true. Always, um, even in secular philosophy, they say the medium is the message. So often it is, really is the medium is the message. It, Understanding Torah through its own words is completely different to understanding it uh, through a translation. Um, that's why we actually say that, uh, that Malachim do not understand Aramaic. Unless you're, um, I think there's, unless you're in a minion, in which case you can say Kaddish in, in, um, in Aramaic, because then once you have, once you have a minion, then the Shekhinah is amongst you and that allows them to understand Aramaic. And the point is, they want to hear in Hebrew and that's how they understand because that is the holy tongue. Now, there are other ramifications to this. A. Uh, the word for a word and the word for a thing is the same word in Hebrew. Davar in Hebrew means thing, and davar in Hebrew also means word, right? Vaydaber Hashem el Moshe Lemor, right? And God spoke to, to Moshe, Vaydaber, davar, it's from the same root. And from that we understand that um, the word describes the essence of the thing in Hebrew. And just to illustrate how, how critical an idea this is, how did God create the world? It says, and we look back, back at Breshit, uh, the third Pasuk, Vayomer Elohim Yehior Vayhior. That's amazing. And that happens regularly. And God said, and it was, Vayomer Elohim Yehior Rakia Vetoch Hamayim, Behim Abdil Ben Hamayim Lamayim. Vayomer Elohim Yikavu Hamayim Etachet Hashamayim El Makoma Echad Vatere Hayo Hashavi Hechen. And it says constantly, God said, and it was. God said, and it was. God created the world through speaking. And therefore we understand that, that, Whatever words God used were, of course, what shaped the matter. Now, the reason why this is so important is because sometimes we get a really strong sense of even deeply philosophical ideas through the words they're being used for. As an example, what is the word for kindness? The, the, the Torah word for kindness, the person who does kind things. So we'd say, there's a quote of Pierre Kiyavo, the, fam the famous one, Shimon Atali, Kaimish, Shere Knesset, Agadola, Huayamer. On three things the world stands. Ala Torah, Vala Voda, and Vagmilut Chasadin. Right? And on uh, kind deeds, on acts of loving kindness. Now, Gmilut Chasadin. What does that mean? So, Chasadin, Chesed means kindness. What is Gmilut? Like giving? Like, well, what does that mean? So, if we refer to the Torah, very interestingly, we go back actually in. Um, uh, further back in Bereshit, if we look at chapter 21, verse 8, so this is when we're talking about how Yitzchak, um, Isaac, uh, Avinu, was uh, was growing up. So it says, Vayigdal hayeled, vayigamal, vayas Abraham ishte gadol, vayom higamel et Yitzchak. As so you see, uh, the child grew and was weaned. Abraham made a great feast on the day Isaac was weaned. So what does vayigamal mean? Vayigamal, this word for Loving kindness, forgiving. Vayagamal, vayigamal means to be weaned. To be weaned uh, means that, that when a child stops uh, stops uh, breastfeeding off of his mother. 
So amazingly, the Torah word, the, the word Gmilur Chasadim, Vaygamal, actually means to stop giving. Because Vaygamal means when, when the mother stops giving to her child. And that strangely is the word for kindness. But through this, the Torah is teaching us an extremely important message that sometimes the way you actualize kindness, the way you show kindness to someone else, is by stop giving to, uh, towards them. And that's actually the, the, the word the Mishnah uses, and, uh, and acts of loving kindness, because sometimes the way you demonstrate kindness is by stopping the giving, because that's, that's when you make it real, right? The way you get bracha, uh, I mean, farmers for sure know this better than any of us do, but the way you get bracha in the world, right, is of course you need to plant, and then the rain comes, but eventually the rain has to stop. Because the, the rain doesn't stop, then the crops will be flooded and ruined. So eventually, so there is, of course, bracha in the giving of the rain, but the ultimate bracha, the time when that kindness is truly realized, is when that, uh, is when that giving ultimately stops. And that's something that's just conveyed through the subtlety of the words of, uh, of Torah. And that's something that Yosef was trying to teach us. He taught Menashe Hebrew. Why did he teach him Hebrew? Just to, to make him know that he's Jewish, because just because I guess it's a Jewish thing to speak Hebrew? No, it's because the essence of wisdom. You can't really understand wisdom without Hebrew. You can't understand Torah without, uh, without Hebrew. And that's one of the lessons we learned from this week's Parsha. Shabbat Shalom.